Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be learning about the origin, insertion, nerve supply and action of the muscles of the body. In this video we'll be learning about the small muscles of the hand. Now there are mainly five groups of muscles that we have to learn in the hand. The first is the thenar eminence. The thenar eminence are the group of muscles that are seen on the thumb aspect of the hand. The hypothenar eminence is the second group of muscles that are seen on the aspect of the little finger, right here. Then we have the four lumbricals for the four digits. Then we have the palma interosei on the palma side and the dorsal interosei for the dorsal side. To begin with, let's look at the muscles of the thenar eminence. We have the abductor pollicis brevis, the flexor pollicis brevis, the opponent's pollicis and the adductor pollicis. Now an easy way to remember this is by remembering the words A, F, O and A. Firstly, we have the abductor pollicis brevis. It originates from the tubercle of the scaphoid, trapezium and the flexor retinaculum. The abductor pollicis brevis originates from the tubercle of the scaphoid and trapezium bones as well as the flexor retinaculum. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx. The abductor pollicis brevis inserts into the basis of the proximal phalanx right here. It is supplied by the median nerve. Its action is the abduction of the thumb. This is the abduction of the thumb. This is the abductor pollicis brevis. It originates from the tubercle of the scaphoid, the trapezium and the flexor retinaculum. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx. Next we have the flexor pollicis brevis. It originates from the trapezoid and capitate as well as the flexor retinaculum. The flexor pollicis brevis originates from the trapezoid and capitate bones as well as the flexor retinaculum. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. It is supplied by the median nerve. Its action is that it flexes the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. This is the metacarpophalangeal joint and the action of the flexor pollicis brevis is the flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. This is the flexor pollicis brevis. It originates from the trapezoid and capitate and the flexor retinaculum. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Next we have the opponent's pollicis. It originates from the flexor retinaculum. The opponent's pollicis originates from the flexor retinaculum which is a band like structure that you can see right here. It inserts into the lateral half of the palma surface of the shaft of the metacarpal of the thumb. It inserts into the lateral half of the palma surface of the shaft of the metacarpal of the thumb as you can see right here. It is supplied by the median nerve. Its action is that it pulls the thumb medially and forward across the palm. This is the action of the opponent's pollicis. It pulls the thumb medially and forward across the palm. This is the opponent's pollicis. It originates from the flexor retinaculum and inserts into the lateral half of the palma surface of the shaft of the metacarpal of the thumb. Next we have the adductor pollicis. It has two heads of origin, the oblique head and the transverse head. The oblique head originates from the bases of the second and third metacarpal, while the transverse head originates from the shaft of the third metacarpal. The oblique head of the adductor pollicis originates from the bases of the second and third metacarpal, while the transverse head originates from the shaft of the third metacarpal. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb on its medial aspect. The adductor pollicis inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb on its medial aspect, right here. It is supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. Now an easy way to remember the nerve supply of the four muscles of the thenar eminence is that the A, F and O are supplied by the median nerve, while the A 
that is the adductor pollicis, is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Now the action of the adductor pollicis is the adduction of the thumb. This is the adduction of the thumb. This and this is the adductor pollicis. The oblique head of the adductor pollicis originates from the base of the second and third metacarpal. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb on its medial aspect. Now moving on to the next group of muscles that is the hypothenar eminence. We have the abductor digiti minimi, the flexor digiti minimi, the opponent's digiti minimi and the muscle of the medial side of the palm that is the palmaris brevis. Now an easy way to remember these four muscles are by the use of the words A, F, O and P. We have to remember that in the earlier group of muscles that, in the, that is in the thenar eminence, we used A, F, O and A while here we are using A, F, O and P. Beginning with the abductor digiti minimi, it originates from the pisiform bone. The abductor digiti minimi originates from the pisiform bone right here. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx. The abductor digiti minimi inserts on the base of the proximal phalanx. It is supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. Its action is that it abducts the little finger. This is the abduction of the little finger. This is the abductor digiti minimi. It originates from the pisiform bone and inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the flexor digiti minimi. It originates from the flexor retinaculum. The flexor digiti minimi originates from the flexor retinaculum. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx. It inserts into the base of the proximal phalanx. It is supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. Its action is that it flexes the little finger. This is the flexion of the little finger. This is the flexor digiti minimi. It originates from the flexor retinaculum and inserts on the base of the proximal phalanx. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the opponent's digiti minimi. It originates from the flexor retinaculum. The opponent's digiti minimi originates from the flexor retinaculum. It inserts into the medial border of the fifth metacarpal. The opponent's digiti minimi inserts into the medial border of the fifth metacarpal. It is supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. Its action is that it pulls the fifth metacarpal forward as in the cupping of the palm. This is the opponent's digiti minimi. It originates from the flexor retinaculum and inserts on the medial border of the fifth metacarpal. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the palmaris brevis. It originates from the flexor retinaculum. The palmaris brevis originates from the flexor retinaculum. It inserts into the skin of the palm on the medial side. It inserts into the skin of the palm on the medial side. This is the palmaris brevis. It originates from the flexor retinaculum and inserts on the skin of the palm on the medial side. It is supplied by the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve. Its action is that it wrinkles the skin to improve the grip. Now moving on to the next group of muscles, we have the four lumbricals. It originates from the four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. We have the first lumbrical, the second lumbrical, third and the fourth. The first lumbrical originates from the lateral side of the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus for the second digit. The second lumbrical originates from the lateral side of the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus of the third digit. The third lumbrical originates from the adjacent sides of the same tendon of the third and the fourth digit. While the fourth lumbrical originates from the adjacent side of the same tendon of the fourth and fifth digit. From this we come to know that the first and the second lumbrical are unipennate while the third and the fourth lumbrical are bipennate. The first lumbrical originates from the lateral side of the tendon of the FTP for the second digit 
as you can see right here. The second lumbricle originates from the lateral side of the tendon of FTP for the third digit that you can see right here. The third lumbricle originates from the adjacent sides of the tendon of the FTP for the third and the fourth digits as you can see right here. This arises from the adjacent sides. Finally, we have the fourth lumbricle that originates from the adjacent sides of the tendon of FTP for the fourth and the fifth digits right here. They arise from the adjacent sides. It inserts via the extensor expansion into the dorsum of the basis of the distal phalanges. The lumbricles insert via the extensor expansion into the dorsum of the basis of the distal phalanges right here. The first and the second lumbricles, that is the unipennate lumbricles, are supplied by the median nerve, while the third and fourth, the bipennate, are supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. The action of the lumbricles is the flexion of the metacarpophalangeal joints and the extension of the interphalangeal joints of the second to fifth digits. This is the action of the lumbricles. Now we can see that it resembles the letter L which stands for lumbricles. So we have the flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint and the extension at the interphalangeal joints of the digits from second to fourth. Moving on to the next group of muscles, we have the palma interosseae. There are four palma interosseae. The first originates from the medial side of the base of the first metacarpal. The second palma interosseae originates from the medial side of the shaft of the second metacarpal. The third originates from the lateral side of the shaft of the fourth metacarpal. And the fourth palma interosseae originates from the lateral side of the shaft of the fifth metacarpal. Here we can notice that there is no origin from the third metacarpal. The first palma interosseae originates from the medial side of the base of the first metacarpal right here. The second palma interosseae originates from the medial side of the shaft of the second metacarpal right here. The third palma interosseae originates from the lateral side of the shaft of the fourth metacarpal while the fourth palma interosseae originates from the lateral side of the shaft of the fifth metacarpal right here. Moving on to the insertion of the palma interosseae. The first palma interosseae inserts into the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb or the first digit, while the second, third and fourth palma interosseae insert via the extensor expansion into the dorsum of the bases of the distal phalanges of the second, fourth and fifth digits. The first palma interosseae inserts into the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb right here. The second, third and fourth palma interosseae insert via the extensor expansion into the dorsum of the bases of the second, the fourth and the fifth digits right here. It is supplied by the deep branch of the ulna nerve. Its action is that it adducts the finger towards the center of the third digit. This is the action of the palma interosseae. Moving on to the last group of muscles of the hand, we have the dorsal interosseae. There is the first, second, third and fourth dorsal interosseae. The first dorsal interosseae originates from the adjacent sides of the shaft of the first and second metacarpal. The second dorsal interosseae originates from the shaft of the second and third metacarpal. The third originates from the shaft of the third and fourth metacarpal, while the fourth originates from the shaft of the fourth and the fifth metacarpal. The first dorsal interosseae originates from the adjacent side of the first and the second metacarpal, right here. The second dorsal interosseae originates from the shaft of the second and third metacarpal. The third originates from the shaft of the third and the fourth metacarpal while the fourth originates from the shaft of the fourth and the fifth metacarpal. It inserts via the extensor expansion into the dorsum of the bases of the distal phalanges of second, third and fourth digits. The dorsal interosseae insert via the extensor expansion into the dorsum of the bases of the distal phalanges of the second, third 
and fourth digits. It is supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. The action of the dorsal interosia is that it abducts the finger from the center of the third digit. This is the action of the dorsal interosia. These are the dorsal interosia muscles. The first dorsal interosia originates from the adjacent sides of the first and second metacarpals. The second dorsal interosia originates from the shaft of the second and third metacarpals. The third dorsal interosia originates from the shaft of the third and the fourth metacarpals. And the fourth dorsal interosia originates from the shaft of the fourth and the fifth metacarpals. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.